Warm up video. All right. What is spark plug B for MQTT take zero? All right. Thank you to EasyVPN for sponsoring this video here. All right, in this video, so if you have not gone back and watched the two videos from OP, about OPC UA and the two videos about MQTT, which were released in August of 2021, go back and watch those videos. Very important. In this video, we're gonna go over spark plug B. What is it? How does it work? This is a video for the layperson. We're gonna do a 10,000 foot and a 5,000 foot discussion, but we're gonna get into some technical details, okay? I'm not gonna go deep into the weeds so that we have people's eyes glaze over, but we are gonna get into some technical details. All right, so what is spark plug B for MQTT, all right? Key elements, okay? We've already gone over this, but some things I wanna point out. Spark plug B, the spark plug B specification, which you can Google, MQTT spark plug B, is managed by the Eclipse Foundation, okay? It is, it was developed, the spark plug B spec was written in 2016 by Cirruslink, which is a company owned by the co-inventor of MQTT, Arlen Nipper. They turned over that specification to the Eclipse Foundation in 2019, okay? The spark plug B specification is a specification for packaging up industrial data and communicating it to a MQTT infrastructure, okay? It is based on the MQTT 3.1.1 standard. So one of the first things that you learn about spark plug B is that it's an extension of the base MQTT 3.1.1 standard. So obviously there will be a new release of the spark plug standard for MQTT5 at some point. MQTT5 was released in 2019, hasn't really gotten wide adoption yet. There are some key elements we're gonna talk about here. So I'm gonna talk about group ID, edge node ID, and device ID here in a minute, okay? What's important to note is that we can package up MQTT payloads, okay? We can group them together, and we can transmit them to a broker all packaged up nice and tidy instead of publishing individual topics to our broker, okay? And I'm gonna to get to all this here in a second. So group ID, edge node ID, and device ID are important concepts, they're key elements. It's basically the logical grouping of your topic namespace. Supports store and forward, so if the MQTT client that you're using that implements Spark, the Spark Plug B spec, this is how you get store and forward, standardized store and forward with MQTT using the Spark Plug B specification. What is store and forward? I have an MQTT client out here on the edge. I've got all this stuff changing. This is connected to sensors. I've got all these values changing and this connection breaks, okay? So that I can't get the data to the broker and I got all my consumers out here. This breaks. Store and forward means is that what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and store all the events locally on the client and when this connection's reestablished, we're gonna go ahead and publish them all to the broker with the correct values and timestamps in the order that they happened. They basically stream up in the order that they happen. And because the timestamp of the value that gets to the broker comes from the client, the clients out here, it looks to them as if that disconnection was never there, okay? Step, storm forward. Another important component. Spark plug B specification has support for templates. What does template mean? It's user-defined data type. Templates in Spark plug B, okay, a UDT, it's basically a, a data type object. A template in Spark plug B is the equivalent of a component spec in OPC UA. We have support for compression in Spark plug B. So what is that? Is that I can, Spark plug B has support for us compressing the payloads and sending them to the, the broker. And the most important concept to understand with Spark plug B is we create edge of network nodes, okay? And that's where I'm gonna start. So remember this, spark plug B equals edge of network node, okay? We're gonna create an infrastructure. So in order for me to explain what this is, let's start with the normal MQTT, which we talked about in last month's videos, okay? So I've got my client, and I have my client who has established my connection to my broker, and I have subscribed to everything with a hashtag. That means, Everything that's in the broker namespace, I want you to send me the updates to. With normal MQTT, we call it vanilla MQTT, so version 3.1.1, I can, this client can do, I could do things like, let's do, I have two companies, right? I've got Intellic and I've got Intellic, Dallas, and Temperature, okay? I can publish Intellic Dallas Temperature to our broker, okay? 
the value, whatever. Today it's 97 degrees, so the value would be 97. If I'm subscribed to everything, I'm going to get that notification, okay? 97. At the same time with MQTT 3.1.1, I can also do this. I could create a new namespace and I could have 4.0 Dallas and temp and I can publish these separately. Okay, so I'm going to establish my connection and I can publish both of these separately flat into my broker. So 4.0 Dallas temp and let's say the value is 100 even though they're both in the same city. So I would end up with one, two, three, and 100 degrees. I would get notified. 4.0 is a little hot. Okay, 4.0 is a little hot. All right. That is your, that's your vanilla MQTT. The, the beauty about MQTT 3.1.1 is that I can create a topic namespace that I can basically piece together my unified namespace, okay? I can take values from sensors and using 3.1.1, I can basically put, I can publish those values to basically anywhere, okay? What does Spark Plug B do, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a Spark Plug B client, okay? So the difference between an MQTT 3.1.1 client and an MQTT Spark Plug B client is the MQTT Spark Plug B client is also an MQTT 3.1.1 client, number one, okay? Why? Because Sparkplug B is an extension of 3.1.1. So it's very important to note, if I'm a Sparkplug B client, I, I natively support 3.1.1 as well, okay? Because Sparkplug B is an extension of MQTT 3.1.1. What I'm doing with Sparkplug B is I'm creating an edge of network node, okay? So what I'm doing, number one, my goal is to create an edge of network node which basically does this. It creates a place in, we'll just say these are edge devices, okay? So these will be spark plug B devices. So in my topic namespace, I've got this thing called spark plug B edge devices, okay? What I'm gonna do with spark plug B is I'm gonna package all my data up for one transmission, okay? So I'm going to create my connection, okay? and I'm gonna build my topic namespace, okay? So these are all my tags. My, uh, let's say, uh, temperature, let's say it's all, let's just list them as sensors. Sensor one, sensor two, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna configure Spark Plug B to send my values to the MQTT broker, and this is what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna give it a group ID. So in my configuration, I'm gonna give it a group ID, and in this case, I'll say the group is Intellic, okay? So the group ID in this case is Intellic. I'm also gonna give it an edge node ID. I don't have to, these are optional, edge node or device ID. But I'm gonna give it an edge node ID and we're gonna call it whatever this edge node is. In this case, we'll say it's Dallas Thermostat. And when I establish this connection, I, I wanna avoid too many of the technical details, okay? There's some things that are gonna happen when I package this all up. Okay, out here in this Spark Plug B client. What's gonna happen is we are going to establish a berth. That is this edge of node, this end, uh, edge, of, uh, edge of node, node, wait, this is edge of node device. Yeah, edge of network device or node, yep. When I go ahead, I'm gonna do ahead and do a berth, which is part, this is part of the spec, which will be stored in this namespace. There's a bunch of topics that are native to Spark Plug B. I'm gonna do a berth and then I'm going to give it a group ID. In this case, I'll give it an edge node ID, Dallas thermostat, and then my sensors will be published here. Okay, sensor one, sensor two. If my client out here supports at Spark Plug B, it will be able to decipher this topic namespace. How does this topic namespace look like when it's raw? What does it look like when it's raw? Well, they use protocol buffers, so, Google Pro, uh, Protobuf, I know, is one of them, and they use a, another one that, that's optional. They use pro, but they use protocol buffers to, to send this data over the, over the wire, okay? If I don't support Spark Plug B, I can't really decipher what this is, okay? If I just look at it with an MQTT 3.1.1 client, I subscribe to it, it's just gonna look like a jumbled mess. You, could, you can kind of see a couple of the, what, what some of the stuff 
a mean like you'll be able to see the edge node actually in the JSON, but it'll be a jumbled mess. Okay. So sp what I'm cre doing with spark plug B is I'm creating an end of network node. I'm packaging everything up together and I'm, uh, there's some technical um, elements like birth certificates and death certificates that don't exist with 3.1.1 so that up here, what I can do is group all these edge of network node, edge of network devices together. Okay. So I can group many devices into the same group. So I could use my thermostat. I could use my, my water heater. I could use my PLCs. I could use my CMT SVR, anything that supports spark plug B and I can group them together logically at the broker. Okay. The reason we use spark plug B is because it was designed for industry. It is designed for all the things that we care about with industrial data. Okay. Compression is a big component of it. Okay. Compression, uh, buffering. So one of the things that we do with these, with a spark plug B connection is we say, how often should we send our updates, publish our updates to the broker? So what'll happen is let's say I set that at one second and sensor one's value changes five times in one second. The only one that gets shipped is the last one. Okay. We publish the last value in that happened in that one second. Okay. So there are a bunch of, there are a bunch of elements of the spark plug B spec that allow us to optimize the transmission of industrial data. Okay. But why does spark plug B matter? Okay. What's the reason that it actually matters? The reason it matters is, is that it's m far more efficient to use spark plug B for industrial applications because I can build my namespace here. I can manually, I can build out a local na namespace for this node. Okay. Or, uh, hierarchy and a semantical namespace. Okay. One that makes sense. And then I can package it all up as one node and publish everything for that node up, S establish a connection, now publish my logical namespace and then keep sending my updates as opposed to with MQTT 3.1.1, there are elements I'm missing. Okay. Number one, but number two, I'm sending each topic individually. So if I've got 10,000 topics, okay, I don't want to have to do 10,000 publishes from my MQTT client. I may not ha want to do that. It may make more sense for me to, to package everything up nice and neat in an edge of network node and publish it to a specific space in our unified namespace. A couple important things here. Number one, my MQTT broker doesn't care whether my payloads are spark plug B or not. Okay. So I could have a broker that can't decipher that is it can't unpack a spark plug B payload, but that doesn't mean that it can't administer it for a client that can. Okay. So as long as my broker is built on the MQTT 3.1.1 specification, I can, I can connect a spark plug B client to an MQTT 311 broker and a spark plug B client out here will be able to subscribe and, and decipher the payload. Okay. That's number one. Number two, because of that, I can put MQTT 311, MQTT five and spark plug B payloads all together. Okay. Where do I want to do this? So what's the, what's the application for spark plug B? Where do we do it? Okay. One of the things that you'll remember in our, in our, when we talk about the rules for digital transformation, we treat all the smart things in our business as nodes in an ecosystem. Okay. Nodes is an eco in an ecosystem. So what we will do is we will group industrial data by logical nodes in the organization. A really good example would be a production line. So I may have a production line that has multiple PLCs. Okay. And I have, I may have an instance of ignition edge running out there or an, in an instance of factory Tatsoft's factory studio, or I may have an instance of flow software, or I may have a canary labs historian. I may have not Kepware because they don't support spark plug yet. Right. I may have an IO hub running out there. I may have uh, a PLC next running out there. I may have a groove, an opto 22 groove Epic running out there. And what I would do is logically group the data, all the instrumentation data and any of the other data that I'm collecting in that node. And then I would use spark plug B to package that edge of network node device, all nice and neat for publishing to the broker. Or 
I could do it manually. I could do the same thing, except I'm not creating an edge of network logical grouping, okay? This gives me a lot more flexibility in how the data is gonna be presented in the namespace. I can take value from this sensor and I can put it over in this location in the namespace. I can take value from that sensor and put it in that location in the namespace. But anything that I send over Sparkplug B is all gonna be grouped logically in the group ID that that connection is publishing to. And in the device ID. If I don't add an edge node ID, edge node ID then it's by default it's gonna use the MQTT client ID in, a, in that space. Go ahead. For the edge of network device, does the device ID have to be unique? Oh. This is a one-to-one -one relationship. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is just an extra layer Okay. This is an extra layer. And this is a common question that comes up in Sparkplug B is, hey, when you start building out namespaces, you're going, okay, well, where, where do I want to organize my data from my device out there? Where do I want to organize it? This, this, it getting this right is important with Sparkplug B, okay? The, the most common application for Sparkplug B for us, though, is basically two places. Number one, when we're logically grouping by a production line or an area or a PLC, and we say, you know what, that's an edge of network device, and we want everything that's, that I'm collecting to go to the same place in the namespace, so let's go ahead and get all the advantages of Sparkplug B. Let's get compression, okay? Let's leverage store and forward, right? All those things, uh, 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 the protocol buffers. Let's, let's leverage that stuff to optimize that transmission even further, okay? But number two is when I'm, when I, this sensor, is a, in, in the OPC UA world, would be like an information model from a companion spec. The way that this is organized is a data type. And I want the, th the clients out here to know that I'm consuming a data type. The only way for us to do that seamlessly is by using Sparkplug B and the mechanisms in the specification to say, hey, this thing in the topic namespace is a template. It is a user-defined data type. It is a model. It is a, it's a data model, okay? All right, so that's Sparkplug B in a nutshell, okay? Sparkplug B, to, a, a quick run through again, it is, a, it is a standard managed by the Eclipse Foundation telling you how to create logical edge of network nodes in your MQTT ecosystem that are optimized for publishing industrial data. When you are building unified namespaces, when you are building uh, topic namespaces, your topic namespaces, Topic namespace is almost always a combination of purely flat MQTT 3.1.1 topics and Sparkplug B topics living alongside one another in the same namespace. And then we generally use our clients to manipulate this even further and normalize and unify, okay? So we, I may take this value here and a value from this and put them together in a new logical area in the topic namespace, okay? Number two. Sparkplug B introduces the concept of a group ID, an edge node ID, and a device ID, and those things are part of our logical grouping for our sensor data and our Sparkplug B client. Number three, we introduce support for store and forward using the Sparkplug B specification. If I lose my connection, I can buffer the data locally, and then I can transmit once I reconnect. We add in support for flagging topics as user-defined data types. We can, there are also other mechanisms in here. I'm not, there's a whole host of other things to Sparkplug B I'm not highlighting here because there's no way for me to do it without basically boring the shit out of everybody. We add in support for compression, additional support for compression. And we remember, most important, what is Sparkplug B for? It's really for creating edge of network devices in our topic namespace, okay? So for every Sparkplug B connection that you have in your ecosystem, you have an edge of network device, a logical edge of network device that groups everything together, okay? That's it. Now let's get to the video.